Hans Wormhat, and this is part four of Where You Live. And let's get started. So, in the top left here, just a wizard girl living in a muggle world took the Hogwarts train, going anywhere. You see it's an orange. I get sick of talking about orange, but orange is 33. It's the only color that's 33. Orange and purple are the two most common colors. I mean, colors are a symbol, just they speak in symbols, and colors are symbolic. So it, it's one of those things where they can say, well, okay, green, like, here, this is green. What is green? The, just to give you an example, star bucks is green, and they have bucks in the name, and they ended up making all this huge amount of money. There's probably a connection there. Okay, and so, yeah colors mean something and orange is just a unity color and a royalty eunuch class if you know about orange you know about the deception the babylonian deception you're playing the game if you know orange is important if you know that orange is just way more important than look at it it's an ugly color it's just not that great if you think of colors Orange doesn't come to mind of like, oh, so beautiful, the color, a bright orange like this. But if you pay attention to how often this color comes up, it's more than just coincidence. And orange, along with royal purple, they're the main colors for these eunuchs. And the whole Harry Potter thing. So I picked it because of the orange, but also... Certain things like Harry Potter, they get really big because it's bigger than just a children's story. It's all one big allegory for this place. That's why there's 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds that are obsessed with this stuff, because it means more than just this surface-level children's story. It's an allegory for, you know, the muggles or the people that are asleep that don't know about the, the magic that's going on, which is popping pills, doing different hormones and lying. Magic is lying. And, yep, that's enough of that. The first rule of Baffo Invert Club is you don't talk about Baffo Inver Invert Club. Where do you think they get the ideas for this stuff? It's, it's a reflection of their society, of what they do. The, f the first rule about that Orange 33 Club is you don't talk about it. I still don't know how they all figure it out. It's like they all go off to a camp one weekend or something, and they get taught about it. I don't know. Because I grew up among these people, and it, it seems like just in stages they learn certain things. And, I mean, I have some personal story. I know that one weekend, it's like a weird thing, one weekend my brother went off to, quote-unquote, like a Christian camp. But my family was definitely not religious, and my brother doesn't hang out with any Christian people. So I don't know, maybe that was just a weird cover for going to some Baphomet training club. And I know that around puberty age, my sister went on a trip somewhere with just my mom. And that stuff like that always seemed weird to me. Like, why we had the means to all go on a vacation. It just seemed really weird for for my sister and my mom, it must, she must have been being taught about a lot of stuff at that time. That's just what I think. Otherwise, wouldn't you go as a family? But there's all, I have a lot of family stories that just don't make sense. So. All right. Now getting more into media stuff. The, the Big Bang Theory talks about it all the time. Bone structure. Here, Penny... Penny went through her entire life without anyone saying they don't like her to her face. She would say she would say it if Penny didn't have such nice cheekbones. It got cut off a little bit, but cheekbones. Cheekbones. You hear people talk about cheekbones all the time. And it's because it's a trait of an MTF, having strong cheekbones. It's all in the bone structure. A little rock cosmetic surgery, all in the bone structure. It's a classic, classic film. And the monologue. How many times does she say bone structure? You already got bone structure. When I was your age, I didn't have no bone structure. It took me years to get bone structure. 
You don't think bone structure is not important. There you go. Truth in plain sight. Look at the little angel wings. Right here. Don't, th don't think bone structure is not important. Train spotting. Bright orange. It's really trans spotting. Fraser. There's a lot of Fraser stuff. I didn't find it. I know it's out there somewhere. There, There's some statement where Fraser even talks about... It's just like a one-liner in an episode, just like out of nowhere. Oh, there was like a rumor that I, maybe I was born a, a woman, or I used to be a woman or something. It's just some... has nothing to do with the story. Just some one-liner, and Fraser says, says it, and I couldn't find it, but... In this episode, this is one that you can easily find. Fraser goes on some long rant about, I am not a man, and it gets chopped off. And, ha ha. Here's another, another episode. Fraser. Uh, I do not scream like a woman. It was a manly, throaty, whatever. Niles comes in. Fraser, you may want to call security. As I got off the elevator, I heard a woman screaming hysterically. Fraser, that was me. Ha ha. Fraser screams like a woman. So funny. These jokes. These screenwriters, they come up with the most insane jokes. People people who are men being mistaken for being women. People who are women being mistaken for being men. Because there's more. Uh, another one in Fraser. The character Dr. Mary makes a joke about Lat Latifah not being born a real queen. Get it? <laughs> and layers. It's a joke about you expect them to say Queen Latifah not being born a real woman, but they come in and say real queen. I thought that was a knee slapper. Here's another one from Fraser. Martin points out a very masculine looking looking woman. Oh, hi, about jokes involving masculine looking women. How funny. What a funny scenario you thought of, witty Fraser writers. It's incessant. It so it gets really boring after a while like it gets insulting how frequently it's the butt of the joke the the tranny being the butt of the joke if these people are a fraction of a fraction of a percent why does it feel like we're being desensitized to it and and just why is it such a big thing why are people constantly joking about it and it's because that's where you live that a part of me i don't know are they is that part of the magic, uh, constantly exposing it to you as a joke? I think that is. I think part of the magic is, by the time you're 10 years old, you've seen a million instances of, of oh, a funny joke about mistaken gender. And I think it's part of what gets you all confused in your brain. You think it's all one joke that a man would be a woman. Or that a woman would be a man. They get you to not take that idea seriously or something. Anyways, here's an interesting thing. Um, there's a there's a genetic disorder called Fraser's syndrome. And it's spelled in the weird way that Fraser is, right? I don't know how Fra Fraser's spelled in a weird way, but Fraser syndrome is a is a genetic disorder. XY gonadal degenesis. We'll just go on to this, because it's right here, and really obvious. PJ, this person's name is PJ Harvey. They have a song called Man Size. I cast my iron knickers down, man size, no need to shout. When they cast their iron knickers down, they're man size. I'm man size, man size. They can sit here and say this over and over. I'm man size, I'm a man, I'm a man. But nobody will listen. If you point it out, People will call you insane. Yeah, look at the low ears, strong square jaw. You'll be hard pressed to see a man walking around outside that looks like this. But this is definitely a man. The one earring, too, is a classic symbol. I mean, you know, I guess it's, I don't want to show the face, it's just gross. But the one earring thing. You know how all those, a lot of men wear one earring? They'll say, oh, if you wear it on this side, it means you're straight. If you wear it on this side, it means you're gay. Okay, if you're wearing one earring, they're telling you that they're half boy, half girl. That's what that means. So whether you're straight or gay, it doesn't matter. You're, that's a free Martin sign to be wearing one earring. 
I thought this was just interesting. There, there's this song. There's a Grateful Dead song about women being smarter in every every way, and just the these lyrics down here. Ever since the world began, women been imitating the ways of men. But listen, cause I've got a plan. Give it up. Just don't try to understand. Girls, we run this mother. Isaiah chapter three verse twelve. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Children, arrested development. We are we're ruled over by women and children. Arrested development inverts, and women pretending to be men. More stuff in the media. They tell you, this is such a common thing, Strats loved that tattoo. A woman would never get so I know this isn't a tattoo, but a lot of people in real life do have these tattoos. It's this generation of, of inverts have so many trashy tattoos. And that's one of them. Natalie Portman. Oh, what a funny joke. You're expecting too. Oh, ha ha. They'll always take the opportunity to make a joke about your... You're a woman. You're a man. It's infantile. It's insanely infantile, but it is so common. It's... I have no way to explain it other than it's a type of magic that they have just by, by constantly talking about the truth and constantly joking about it and making a big, a big deal of it. It allows them to continue this charade. I don't know. All, all I know is, is that once I woke up and started paying attention to it, I realized how pervasive it is, and it's almost insulting that we didn't recognize it sooner. Maybe it's a fake thing that I'm doing. Planet Arium. Kind of moving on to a slightly different topic. Flat Earth stuff. They talk about the truth other than other than the invert truth. South Park, Planet Arium. There, there's a whole gag about this person who has a rare bone disorder that they can't pronounce the T in Planet Arium. Well, what's planet if you take away the T? Plane. Plane Arium. It's a plane. It's a flat plane. It's not a planet. It's a joke. Somebody, thank you, a commenter told me about this in... Uh, the office. Andy goes crazy and starts talking about flat earth stuff. Me, uh, oh, we're flying so high, we're cracking the sky. Gonna fly out this dome, my girlfriend and I. Think of all the media references of domes. Yes, we live under a dome. It's the firmament. In the, I found this in the comments of Reddit. I've heard rumors about people at level 33 being part of the Supreme Council and that there are no higher levels that we're allowed to know about. You shut the F up right now. The ad does look like a Masonic symbol down here. Surely know not what you speak of, those single eyes. I was talking about a video game, nothing else. Handshake, skull and bones, see no evil, speak no evil, the balances. Someone responded to that guy with just the triple six, the 666 hand sign, the emoji. Hate emojis. The people probably love emojis because it's like hieroglyphics. They're obsessed with fake H of Egypt. Things Reddit enjoys making fun of. Here's the starter pack, part one, Flat Earth Society. And then they made a part two, and they the Flat Earth Society is still in here. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of repeats here, but... There, here's another one. Reddit's punching bag, starter pack, Flat Earth. Reddit is orange 33. Reddit is full of these tongue-in-cheek. Yuck, yuck. I hear there's a 33 thing. Yep. And they are constantly bashing Flat Earth. They're calling anything that Reddit is pushing run in the complete opposite direction of. It's a glowing orange beacon of, of Babylonian horror and disgustingness. You can, you know, feel sick sometimes going over there. Looking, don't even want to click on things because you just read the headline and you know it's going to be something foul. But anyways... Ye shall know them by their fruits. Those Orange 33 people over there at Reddit are constantly bashing Flat Earth. Oh, here was another thing on Twitter. Or, er, on 
on the office, the office on Twitter, here's the thing about moonlight, it's not sunlight. And so I guess that was another quote from the office, which is true. Moonlight is not sunlight. Here's more media stuff. James in Pokemon constantly cross-dressing. Constantly. Here's one from My Little Pony. My Little Pony has cross-dressing. Every show has it. It's it's where you live. Here's from something from what is that? Karate Kid. What's the matter? Are you some kind of girl or something? They their jokes like that, they have double meanings. And I mean, it's kind of sad because I know some real life examples where some some free martins were like really sensitive to stuff like that. They were like super sensitive to be to being called a pussy or things like that. It would like set them off like I've never seen before. And it's because they know they understand the second meaning to that. They understand that they are different, that there there is a part of them that is female. And so, yeah, I've just, I have a personal story of I knew somebody who free more. I mean, now now I know what they are, but if you ever tried to insinuate that they were female in some way or that they were a pussy or something, it would set them off like insanity in a way that I've never seen before. Like, and now that I say that it seems like such a common thing. Think of how sensitive some of these free Martins are to having their masculinity judged. And it's cause they, they do know that a part of them is female. Anyways, that can't be all the time. He's cross dressed. There's gotta be more when Ash, cross-dressed, red shoes, which is a pedophile symbol. Again, different colors can have different meanings. Colors have meanings. They're symbols. Same thing with numbers. It's not always 33. They have a whole number system that they follow, and different people can make up different things. But the point is, is that these things have meanings. Or look at orange, bright orange. What do you know? When the main little boy character cross-dresses, they put him in a bright orange dress. These are the last ones here. I'll just try to go fast through. Law and Order had a million different things. I was trying to find this thing, and I couldn't find it. Sometimes things just disappear from the internet, and you can't find them. Speaking of which, I'll mention right now, on my bit shoot, I just re-uploaded a video of Tila Tequila admitting that she was transgender, and that video got scrubbed from the internet. Vimeo took down my my video, so I put it back up to BitChute. They'll admit it, but then sometimes they'll go back and scrub it. I don't know. So here, it's just, there's too many episodes, too much TV, too many jokes, too much of everything points at you live in tranny land. If we didn't live in tranny land, this stuff wouldn't exist. We wouldn't have so many plot lines involving transgenders. We wouldn't have so many stories where the punchline is it's a dude in a dress. It wouldn't be a joke every episode about the people being reverse genders. It's it's clear that we live here when you just look. You have to look for it. Too much transgender stuff. Why is our perp taking that? To block testosterone production. He could be using it to treat advanced prostatic cancer or he's undergoing male to female gender reassignment. What woman wants a guy who can't perform? It's just... A part of way too much stuff. I'm talking about Turner syndrome. Here's more stuff from SVU. Uh, do you ever feel that your stamina is declining? That you don't have the energy you used to? Or you've lost your edge? No, but let's say that I was. Well then, I would put you on a course of human growth hormone and testosterone therapy. I guarantee you'd be a new man in the squad room. Not to mention the bedroom. This stuff happens in real life. That's why they're talking about it in the media. That's why the, the writers who write this stuff, they get the idea for the, from this stuff from real life. Cops are the most roided out people out there. That's why they're hairless and they're bald and fat but muscular at the same time. Roided out women. You know, why? Bosom buddies. Why does bosom buddies exist? Not Somebody had to have the idea for it. People had to okay it, and then there had to be writers to write this stuff for two seasons. Look at this, season one, episode nine, it's called Cahoots. <laughs> season two, episode one, the truth and other lies. Um, dual lives, the whole idea of living dual lives. And I'll just end on this. 
Where do people get the ideas for these things? Welcome to Lake Wobegon, where all the women are strong, all the men are good looking, and all the children are above average. That's it for this. God bless everyone.